Hello and welcome to One Hour Indie, where we play an indie game for about an hour and then kind of decide where we would go with it, if we want to keep playing or what level of investment we've developed in our hour of playing. So, this is my first episode of my new series. So, my last series was the One Hour Gaming, and I have just sort of want to rotate series around. So, I'll do some One Hour Indie episodes and then hop back and maybe do some occasional One Hour Gaming of like more well-known games, but for now, we're going to do the one-hour indie, and we're going to start off with Luminera, The Radiant Journey. So, let's see what this has in store for us. This is the demo for Luminera, The Radiant Journey. I believe it comes out either this year or next year. And let's get started. Please select a team to proceed to the first dungeon of the game. Note that any progress made in this demo will not carry over into early access nor the final game. So please feel free to try out every and any team at your leisure. So we'll watch the intro. We might, might have time to do multiple teams depending on how the chapters go. Our story begins in a place where all dreams come to flourish. A tavern and a rickety one at that. Where might this tavern be, you ask? Why? It's in Risewald, of course. You came to this tavern to look for a crew? A crew for the pilgrimage. It seems the hunt for your team has taken longer than expected. You fell asleep on the counter. You may be asking yourself, pilgrimage? What pilgrimage? Well, I shall let these two brazen drunks explain. <laughs> Was it? All the mercenaries are in town for the pilgrimage? What in the heck is that? Hmm. Have you lived here for decades and not know? Do you only know the ins and outs of your stool man? Pilgrimage is a worldwide journey that involves a visit to every kingdom in Lyran. The adventure adventurers grab a bit of essence from the elemental conduits, and once they find all eight, they get to make a wish. Anything they want. Anything you want? Looses and all? Sounds too good to be true, mate. Nah, mate, it's, it's the truth. I've heard stories that people who go on this journey come back changed men. If it's so good, why don't you go? What? With my bum leg? I wouldn't make it to the outskirts. Besides, I'll, I got my ale. It's all I need in life. Ain't that the truth? It's like Norman. It's like Cheers. Norman Cliff. Well, that explains that. But those... Oop, that went a little quick. I think that's my fault, though. Hey, you! Wake up already! So we got some nice pixel art going on here. You wake up in an old crusty tavern. The dank smell of ale fills your nostrils. You can hear the sound of drunkards clinking glasses in excitement. You slowly look up to see who woke you. At first glance, you can already tell he's the bartender. He looks down at you a ways. He's very tall, around 6'3". Large, gorgeous mustache adorns his face, covering his mouth. His eyes flush with dark blue irises. The sign of an... A quails and master of water. Eh, hey, long day, huh? Yeah, looks like slim pickings this year. Children barely capable of shaving going on a dangerous journey. What's the world come to? Eh, no offense. Anyway, I've been babbling long enough. Let me pour you a drink. Bartender turns slightly to his left and points to the palm, palm of his hand to one of the jars beside him. All of a sudden, the liquid inside churns and flies out into the glass in front of you. Ha, ah, impressed, are we? Well, don't be. My mastery of aquilazine. I'm butchering that, I'm sure. Arts extend as far as moving small amounts of liquid in short distances. The only soothsaying I'll be doing is through my listening skills. So anyway, I've been prattling on for a while now. I'm curious, what's your story? Are we on a journey of discovery? A journey of purpose, where it looks like you've got a dude with an axe. Here it looks like maybe you have like a fire mage. And journey of revenge, where you've got a soldier. I think we're going to go on a journey of revenge. And again, depending on how long of a demo this is, we'll try one of the other paths. 
you are Frederick. As a former paladin of Beryllium, you sometimes had to do things you didn't fully agree with. Sometimes horrible things, but as a loyal soldier, you never questioned your orders. Until one day, you were asked to do something unspeakable. You fought against it and asked your king to seek a different route. This was your undoing. It was this decision that led to a horrid betrayal, one that resulted in your imprisonment and your removal of the title and the death of your wife Olivia. Now you seek revenge against the man who took your life away. Now you seek the kingdom you defended for so many years, burned with a fire more intense than the hatred you harbor. Is this the path you seek? All right. Sounds legit. During your imprisonment, you met and befriended a monk named Josiah, who was imprisoned for protesting against Beryllium's war crimes. As both of you were scheduled to be executed, you figured neither of you had anything to lose by working together to escape from captivity. When the opportune moment struck, both you and Josiah fought and clawed your way out of the Beryllium, out of Beryllium, barely making it out alive. The two of you were free. The two of you helped each other out, slowly making your way to the nearby village. Josiah knew the people of the village and asked for their help with medicine and provisions. It was here that Josiah called upon the help of an ally of his, Nadine, a mender. She was a wandering healer who had made her camp at this village. She was also there to protest the inhumanities of Beryllium, but had managed to get away when Beryllium began arresting everyone. With these two in place, you asked them for help, something that you had never done before. You asked them to join you in the pilgrimage. Curious, the two asked you why you would want to join. You told them that being an envoy of the pilgrimage allows you to access all to all countries, Beryllium included. Josiah and Nadine agree to help you out, and so you set off for Rizwald until someone got in your way. A strange wizard wearing a mask appeared before you. When you asked him to identify himself, he gave you a piece of paper to read. My name is Yes, so I am a beholder. I would like to join you on your pilgrimage. I will be of great use. You weren't exactly comfortable with the idea of someone who cannot speak joining you, but apparently Josiah seems to know him. He vouches for him. It's a really cool character design. I'm really impressed with it so far. And so this is how you, Frederick the Paladin, Josiah the Monk, Nadine the Mender, and Yeso, if I'm saying that right, the Beholder, join together for this journey. Great, and it's time to head over to the Halcyon Woods. Enjoy the demo. So this was made in RPG Maker by uh, a developer, a game dev that I've spoken to before named Eric. If you follow me in other places, we spoke to Eric on our other one of my other shows, Game Dev Hideout. And it, talking to him made me really interested in wanting to play this. So I'm excited to keep going. Loving it so far. You can definitely see the Dungeons and Dragons, the D&D, like storytelling coming through in the... I remember him saying that another major influence is Avatar, The Last Airbender, which is reason alone for me to want to play it. Having left the bustling city of Rizwald, the group now makes its way for the Halcyon Woods. A comfortable silence washes over them as they approach the whistling trees. What fears the band may have may have slowly but surely begun to fade. This is a serene place, and the best thing to do is push forward to the Yale Monastery. Right, so let's see, this is... Hold there. Ah, uh, another band of mercenaries heading to the monastery. Be wary of a group of bandits called the Ronin. The rats have decided to make a camp in the woods ahead. Do we look like we'd have trouble with bandits? Let us through. We'll take a care of your rodent problem. So our guy is very smug. Is that so? Upon further inspection, I do see the wary eyes of battle across many of you. Would you be interested in routing the bandit camp up ahead then? You shall be paid, of course. Here's the guild contract. Got it. I will pray for a safe journey. Right, so this is point and click, so let's see how this works. The main quest, a pesky rodent problem. Once you finish the job, come back here and I'll give you some provisions. I'll also give you something that will help you proceed in the forest. Good hunting. 
Also here, since this is a demo and you haven't actually been to the town yet, you might need some supplies. So he's nice enough to give us some cool stuff. Got our full menu. We got Frederick down here, Josiah, Nadine, and Yeso. I hope, I hope I'm saying that right. It's a cool name and it's a cool design for a character. And I'm super curious as to what it does. So let's see here. Oops. So here's our menu. Frederick, Josiah, Nadine, and Yeso. Oh. So I'm curious to know what a beholder does. Let's see. Off in the distance, the team sees a group of bandits cloaked in rags and battered armor. This group of bandits doesn't seem like it'll pose much of a challenge. Would you look at that? More suckers traveling for the pilgrimage. It's almost too easy. I'm starting to feel bad. Let's go wait for them at the encampment. Right, so they took off. So, do some exploring. This game, if I haven't already mentioned it, was made in RPG Maker. But you might not immediately come to that conclusion because he's added so many of his own elements to it. This looks like a gardening spot. Let's farm for materials. We'll have Nadine farm for materials. We've even got our, like, uh, chance cube. I'm not well versed in D&D, so won't tr try not butcher things too much. But so he made it an RPG maker, but he's done so many of his own touches that it doesn't really feel like an RPG maker thing. Like his sprites are really different. All his tile sets feel pretty unique. It looks like a squirrel. It seems like it's trying to tell you something. Would you like to dis try to decipher it? Absolutely. As your party decides which of you to speak to the feral critter, the squirrel decides that it doesn't need you to decide and speaks on its own. What are you crooks doing staring at me like I'm some kind of breakfast item? <laughs> Bad enough. I had my precious treasure jacked by those hounds. Was it? How am I talking? Well, with my mouth, aren't I? Jeez, I didn't think my life would end being eaten by some dumb, dirty humans. Now then, look. How about this, then? How about you don't eat me and I give you something grand? Of course, I'm not just going to give it to you. I also need you to do something for me. How about it? Let's do it. By my short sword, I shall succeed. What do you want from this man? The nutty aggressor. A pack of vicious lobos have stolen the squirrel's nut. He asked us to retrieve it for him. That's bloody fantastic. Now then, look. A pack of blazing lobos stole me priceless treasure and ran off somewhere north of here. You get my treasure back, I'll pay you. They tend to avoid places with humans, so I'd avoid any of the places that these filthy type bandit types have set up camp. Anyway, I'll be waiting here. Waiting. I'll be here waiting, patiently. Looks like a mining spot. Let's try it, I suppose. Uh, we'll have Frederick. Got a 10. Roll an attribute 7. Got some bronze ore. Ooh, got a nice scarecrow. Scarecrow, used to scarecrows. It seems old and used as if it stood the test of time fighting the dark blight for centuries. A wind crystal. They are perpetually producing clean air, so they're extremely valuable. One of these popping up in your house is a blessing. They do tend to knock over small objects, though. Right. Got a lot of quests going on. A sad-looking man is just standing there, looking down at the ground. Would you like to talk to him? I guess so. Oh, hey there. Sorry if I seem down. I'm preparing myself for the battle of the century. You see, my wedding ring was mugged by some bandits. Unfortunately, I can't just let it be. My wife would, will kill me. Like, actually kill me, with her bare hands. Problem is that even though I fear her more than the bandits, I still can't bring myself to face them. I'm a coward, I know. Hey, would you be willing to help me out? I'll pay you, of course. I'll even set up the quest. With the guild, so you get credit. What about it? 
Got it. I will pray for a safe journey. Great. Bandits that mugged me ran west of here. You should be able to find them around there. Good luck and thanks again. The newly dead game. So there's a lot of like really quirky, nice RPG humor in here. Let's see. Try going west a little bit. Doesn't seem to go anywhere so far. But yeah, like I was saying, it was made in RPG Maker, but so many of the sprites, particularly like the smaller things, like the lamp and the scarecrow, whatever is happening at this well, all feel really authentic. You'll feel worse staying hungry. Right? a well. If you mix a well with a bucket, you get water. If you mix little Timmy with a well, you get a rescue mission. So it definitely has a lot of that fun, quirky humor. I like the characters. As you walk towards the center of the clearing, a bandit and a Lobos approach you. The Lobos look at the party with starving eyes drool cascading from between its teeth. We've got a wolf on our hands. Oi there, we've been expecting you. We've heard lots of terrible things. Frankly, it's got my little Lobos here all hungry. I don't know what I can do to hold him back. But if I really had to think about it, I'd say a hundred looses, and we'll leave the forest and never come back. Otherwise, I might have to let my friend here have a little nibble. What do you say? I think we should battle. We will not let him con us. Order. Frederick starts in order mode. Right? So, we'll have him attack. Oops. Right? Take on the firewall first. Sure. Hit. Frederick slashes through the blazing lobo. Let's do use something stronger. Continue going after. Josiah strikes. 17 damage. The Blazing Lobo has fallen. So this might not be that useful. Let's not go crazy. Get some nice, nice numbers here. So, anxiety, weighted panic, perpetual fear, manic hysteria. Uh, let's try it. Crook's fear level rises. That seems good. Oh, you don't go after Freddy. Frederick. Alright. Keep it low again. Boom. And that should do it. There he goes. Never abide a bully. Got some nice points. Cool character design. Bubble leaf root. Pesky rodent problem. Objective 2. Can we go in this house? The cabin looks like it's about ready to collapse any second, so we don't need to go in there. Wait, I don't know how much mining I have to do. Can I fall in this hole? Looks like a hole used for, well, things that modern plumbing have fixed. <laughs> so flushed out. Let go of me, you disgusting, filthy bags. I will punch your rotten teeth in. Pipe down, girl, unless you want my blade closer to your throat. Now hand over the jewels and the looses. Party steps forward to reveal themselves to the bandits. Who are you? Back off. You want her, you'll have to pay. Ugh, you don't have to worry about me. I got them right where I want them. Frederick looks around to see what their options are. They see a branch of porcupine pellets overhanging the bandit's head. They could also trust the girl to hand her herself. Finally, they can simply attack. 
These idiots are in over their heads. I'll take care of them. Um, I think we should drop the pellets and we'll have Josiah do it. Come on. Result equals 19. Number one grabs a nearby rock and aims at the branch. Before the bandits notice, it hits it just enough to shake off the pellets. The bandits look up just as the pellets explode on their heads. The glowing yellow powder from the pellet spreads all over. Ah, I, I can't move. My bones are completely frozen. Me neither. What the hell? Is this crap Severin is allergic to? Dazed by pellets, the girl sprints towards the party. Once behind them, the party springs into action. We've got you. Alright. Got a protector. Alright. We'll try to attack the bulky brigand. Ooh. He evaded the attack. Not ideal, but we'll blazing fist him. Ah, that did a bunch. Nice. So we'll just have Nadine continue to go after him. Perfect. He's gone. I actually like the combat quite a bit. I feel like I would probably better understand the dice roll if I was more of a D and D player. So that I'm a little confused about. Other than I, it seems like the high numbers are obviously the better numbers. But all right, righteous arm. No check. Does not use. I'm just attacker. 17, that should be a good hit then. Perfect, nice. Right? Some more healing, some more experience. But this is going to be a new character for us. Looks like you were thinking the same as me. Porcupine pellets are the worst. Anyway, my name is Harmony. Thanks for helping me out. Frederick asks Harmony what what Harmony is doing in the woods. Well, it's kind of a long story. I'll just give you the shortened version. Me and my sisters are exploring therein looking for a flower called the Radiant Bloom. It's supposed to have the powerful mystical properties. Some have even gone so far as to say that it could heal any malady. Our mom is well, she's really sick. She seems to have accepted her fate, but we're a bit more stubborn. I don't suppose any of you have any information a miracle flower that can cure any malady. My, that would be incredible. I imagine it won't be easy to find, though. Trust me, I'm skeptical, too. I don't have any choice, though. We have to save her. Well, thanks again for the help. I'm sure we'll see each other again somewhere. So she's not joining us for now. The Ignisian Standard, a phoenix rising from a raging fire. The phoenix is a symbol of the people of Reswald. Right, so we'll continue. A large boulder is in the way. It looks like it can be destroyed with sufficient force. We have anything to destroy it? Maybe. Gex? Nope. So not yet. But we'll continue on. Looks like there's a path leading somewhere. Would you like to check it out? Sure. Who should investigate? And yes, so you think he could behold the path ahead? Wow, Yeso starts going forward. It looks like they found something. Call the rest of the team over. Uh oh, the team walked into the clearing only to find three blazing lobos staring viciously at them. As if they were expecting them, the three lobos snarl at the party. Flames slowly spewing out of the cracks beneath their teeth. Um, 
guess we should fight them. Party decides to attack the Lobos head on. We can take them. Alright. Boost his stats. I'll have him go in for a hit. Not too bad. Need some like AoE damage. Guardians of War. Kills all allies. So we're actually doing fine health wise, so we'll just keep on the offensive. Boom. Ah, they all managed to avoid. That's okay. Try to crank out some anxiety. Wait. Oops. Right, we might have to use some higher level healing. They're gonna keep going after us like this. Definitely have to get rid of that first one. But I remember another thing that Eric had said when I was talking to him was that, um, like I was saying earlier, that the Avatar has pretty big impact on this. And you can definitely see that. Like it feels like you have like the water bender at the bar. It's just like the perfect mix of like the Avatar, like deeper storytelling with like your the like very lived in world. Like the characters talk, don't talk like it's your first time meeting them. They talk like they've existed forever in the world. And I feel like in some games, you don't get that. You get a lot of the like, oh, hello person I'm meeting for the first time. Welcome to my bar. This feels like you're talking to characters that have existed in this world for a long time and you just happen to be talking to them in that moment. And it's not strange or weird in any particular way. That like lived in feel. Whereas the characters don't exist for you, they exist for their own reasons. And they just so happen to be talking to you. And I think that's what's making it kind of stick out and feel special to me. Right. He also said there are a ton of characters in this, which if there we have three stories so far and we have four people already, that leads me to believe there's at the very least 12, but I feel like he was saying there was a bunch. Level up tutorial, we'll skip that. We'll catch on. Let's see what we got. What a surprise! The party finds a large treasure chest. Upon closer inspection, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. So, stuff! A green beret, leather gloves, emerald sage. Don't know why I read those in the reverse order. Let's investigate. Find a dead bird. They decide to put it back. Josiah begins to dig, they find a particularly shiny nut. Alright, so that must be for our squirrel friend, so we will now make our way back towards him, because he was going to give us something really cool. And I wonder if that is true or not. So, we'll beeline back to him. The smoke at the fireplace is really cool too. I haven't found his ring yet, I don't think. back this way. Well then, you got my treasure, right? Right. Shiny nut. Ah, there it is, my beautiful baby. I've been prepping this nut for a very special occasion. Took it on walks and everything I did. Now then, your reward, was it? Hold on. I need to drag it. Give me a few. Well, it's nice of him to bring it to us and not say, it's in the north. Hold on, my breath. Here you go. 
we got a grand phoenix feather. So, inventory. Grand Phoenix Feather, a feather from an adult phoenix, rumored to bring people back from the brink of death, removes near death and restores 10 HP. Perfect. So we'll continue on. Gotta find this dude's ring before his wife actually kills him. We're looking, dude, we're looking. All right, we'll continue on. Got some something over here. Probably won't do the mining because I'm sure that's a side part of the game that we won't really get to and I want to show off as much as we can. But even as far as like being an RPG maker game, the combat feels very different with like the dice rolling and everything. Like having like met, I feel like everyone's played like two hours of RPG maker at some point in their gaming life. And I feel like just having done that, none of this feels familiar. Like, he's built out a ton of this stuff. Looks like a lot of thick trees are in the way. Do we have anything that can put them down? That won't work. Where you just... So... Like, the base mechanics for the RPG Maker fighting are just, like, early Final Fantasy-style... Or like early Dragon Quest style. So the fact that he's like taken it and like morphed it this much is really impressive. And then his like cutscenes and everything, they feel really full too. Upon arriving, you notice two bandits standing around talking amongst themselves. It seems they haven't noticed you yet. Tutorial. When you come across an opportunity event, you'll have a certain amount of time, amount of choices to make. The social choices can change depending on the variety of variables. Variables. Choosing a attribute encounters a encounter check. Encounter checks roll a 20d dice and add the result along with a specific attribute of the character you chose. Passing the necessary threshold will result in a successful check. Uh, I feel like we should listen. Maybe they're not bad guys. Who will listen in? I feel like she's probably pretty cunning. So let's put her in there. Rule 7, attribute, result 8. Nadine leans in closer to listen to the bandit's conversation and immediately steps on a branch, alerting them of their presence. Trying to get the jump on us, eh? Let's show them the pointy end of our blades, mate. They're just strangely Australian. So we got the Swift Bandit and the Bulky Brigand again. We'll just go after them. Start with the Swift Bandit this time. Got a nice roll. And then he even built out the character cards. I believe when you're doing the generic, just built-in RPG Maker stuff, you just literally, it has like the character name. It wouldn't, I don't think it even really has like the character like like bio picture probably has the health meter but a lot of this is flushed out and I feel like it, in the interview I even remember him saying that like he had been using it for a long time and he wanted to like add his own stamp to it so seeing it now it makes total sense what he was talking about at the time I only had an Apple computer, so I wasn't able to play the demo, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to play this one. Because some of the people we talked to, I'm just now getting to actually play their demos. And again, Avatar The Last Airbender is one of my favorite, like, cartoons to watch. Because the story... Oh, I don't have enough power. Let's just try the basic. Ooh, perfect. Nice. Because of that, like, long-form storytelling, while keeping it really fun at the same time. Perfect, we win! 
Yeah. And the art style kind of has that avatar feel to it as well. And I think that art style is one of the, my favorites in animation. Our foes have fallen. Let's continue. I should say a quick prayer. Let me join you. There's going to be a lot of prayers ahead of us. <laughs> so Frederick is the con cons consummate optimist. Let's see. A destroyed cabin lies here. Would you like to enter? Sure. Team wanders. If walking inside these cabins is safe, not because the bandits, but rather the smell. So maybe there's some stuff to get here. It's a jar. Looking inside, you can see an intense amount of sand. Sure. Yeah. As Frederick digs around in the sand, they happen to find a weeding knife. Right. Anything else? Broken jar. It looks like it was... Being used as target practice. There are abundance of rocks in the jar. It's a sack. Based on a cursory glance, it looks like there's something inside. Yeah, we'll look inside. Find a bubble leaf root. Okay. Not too much going on in there. Can we take this hammer? Rusty anvil and hammer. Looks like it used to be a blacksmith shop at some point. Go in the destroyed cabin. A dirty shed, disgusting and completely unlivable. Of course, that doesn't seem to stop these bandits. Looks like, is that a person? A bandit, but drunk off his rocker, and no cause for concern. As the team walks away, he mutters in a low, ashamed voice, Yeah, you better run. <laughs> Real tough guy. The chest is filled with random trinkets and baubles. Everything looks filthy and not worth trying, touching any of it. Some blank scrolls. So you did a really big job making so many items with dialogue boxes. Like even like the holes in the ground being good for plumbing and everything. All right. So let's see, we made that squirrel happy. Let's see if we eliminated enough bandits. We've been doing pretty good, making some nice progress. A shady cabin is here. Looks like it's been here for years, but it hasn't been taken care of at all. I feel like we're exactly where bandits would be. On a cursory glance, it appears no one's home. You decide to knock, you hear no response. You decide to try the doorknob, locked. A jar used for jar-like purposes. Some would say it's very jarring what a jar can or can't do. Oh, and there's nothing in there. <laughs> it's very funny. A small serene lake is here. Looking further ahead, it doesn't seem obvious where the water comes from. There might be something hidden here. Uh, you can check the babbling water. We will investigate. Fortitude. So he has the highest fortitude, so we can have a chance. I think that's enough. What do we got? Frederick swims down the lake with relative ease. They find a tunnel, and the rest of the team know to follow. Ooh, another chest. Should we really be opening that? It's not ours. I'm sure whoever hid it here did it so for us to find it. Nods vehemently. All right, open the chest. What do we got? Ambler's mitts, old bruisers, and healing salve. Then we got a bunch of things we can mine. You swim back to safety. I was gonna say, what happens if we don't roll high enough to get away? Okay, so that doesn't go anywhere, so we'll continue on. Back to the front. see, did we do enough? Something about the way you're walking towards me tells me that you have completed your mission. The woods are a bit cleaner now. Hopefully they'll think twice before attacking here again. 
glad tidings to us all, then. A promise is a promise. Here are some items to help you on your journey. Healing solo, bubble root, bubble leaf. I regret asking to, you to help further, but could I bother you with another request? You see, one of our scouts has gone missing. We asked him to investigate why the Ronin have set up camp here. One of our wall guards said that he thought he saw him enter a cabin in C3. If you can please investigate for us and bring him back, we'd greatly appreciate it. Right, so I wonder if C3 is where we were. Right. Come on. Really doesn't want us going to the next part of this map. Let's check this. The guard at the entrance said that the scout would be inside here. You decide to shout for him. Get out now! I am Frederick, a paladin. I have a message, mission to accomplish, and I will not be hindered by you. All right, I'll let you in. Suddenly, sound begins to come from behind the door. The slide of a chain, the shift of the lock, a few kicks and smacks for good measure, then the door opens. As the group walks into the dusty cabin, they see a Rizwald scout. He slowly limps over to the table. He seems to have injured his leg somehow. I take it you were sent by the guard captain. I was sent to find out why the Ronin are so close to the city. It's odd of them to even be around here. Well, it's all well and good, but we need to get you out of here. Can you walk? Yes, my wounds have mostly healed. I should be able to walk at least. Thank you for helping me don't want your thanks. I'm in a hurry. Thus, so are you. Let's go now. Right, so we need to get out of here, but they have scouts of their own looking at the main road. We'll need to sneak through the thick forest and out to the south. Let's go. Escape from the bandits, the Ronin has set up watch all over the forest. You must help the Roosevelt scout reach the exit without being seen. Uh-oh. So there's a bandit there. Oops. Hey, what are you doing here? That didn't go quite well. Okay. Just that guy. Hey, what are you doing here? Ah, oh, we're so close to. So he's even built out like borderline mini games here impressive I don't want to fail though so there's one there victory yeah we did it you found him thank you so much for the help Yes, thank you as well. I didn't think I was going to make it back. So, what have you found out? Right, so, your hunch paid off. The Ronin are here for a specific reason. They're looking for the entrance to the Great Tree. Pharos, what could they possibly want there? The Ronin have never had a purpose beyond mugging people on the streets. That's just it. They seem to have new leadership. I heard the name Severin from a couple of bandits. Also, Kilgore. I haven't heard the name Severn before. Kilgore, though, he's a vicious bandit who has seen the bars of our prisons more times than I can count. He is extremely dangerous. Well, best let our new friend here go on their way. This is our problem to take care of. Don't bother. Those fools will more than likely get in our way. We can easily dispose of them. You would take care of them for us? Thank you. We don't know what we can do to thank you for everything. Here, take this logging axe. This will help you proceed further into the forest. You have obtained the logging axe. Use this axe to cut down the dying trees and chop up certain objects. Costs 1 AP. Right, so we got our marching orders. We gotta go hack down that tree that was in the way. Continue to our right, I suppose.
Maybe there's hope for this dude's wedding ring. After all. I wonder if this is a... An insane looking tent filled to the brim with different amounts of knickknacks and doodads. Right? So that was the boulder, so we'll continue this way. It's all packed up there. As the party walking forward, they are approached by some enemies. Let's try to avoid contact. That is a nice feature that you don't have to grind, but it does cost you action points. I haven't figured out quite how to get those back once we use them. We do have something that can cut it. It's our logging axe. Josiah swings axe backwards and lunge forward with all their might. And we got an oak log out of the deal. Right? Give us something cool. We got dragon branch berries, platinum Sahara, and remedial balm. Again, we're not really going to dig too much into the like item collecting of this. Just since we're more going for gameplay and story. So we've got a very pompous paladin. Well, pomp pompous probably isn't fair. I think as our story set up, he's ang just consumed by revenge. Sort of like a Count of Monte Cristo type character, if you will. It's just one goal, and that is all. So, arrogant for sure, but arrogant with a bit more purpose than just arrogant to be a jerk for the sake of being a jerk. Nadine swings the axe backwards. Finally, let's get a move on. Yeso walks in front of Frederick and puts his hand up as if to stop him. He seems to sense a danger ahead. I think he's saying we should check to make sure we're rested, possibly even record any progress we might have made. I see what you did there. Let's go rest. I remember seeing a camping spot a little ways away. So I wonder if the camping is how you heal. Let's see. Hmm. I think we're actually doing okay. Like I said, I don't want to waste too, too much time doing this other stuff. The only person really hurt right now is Nadine. And I believe... There we go. Eternal stage restores vitality. How do we restore will? Oh, there we go. Boom. And boom. Right, everybody's basically back to full health. No problems. We'll continue on. As the team walks forward, they see a bandit standing at the other end of the bridge. This bandit has a mighty aura about him, as if this will be a competent foe. If it isn't Josie, what a small world, huh? Oh, he looks pretty serious. It's been many a moon since someone has called me Josie. Kilgore. So is it true? You yet live? You always did run around... Have a runaround way of speaking, Josie. Yes, I still live. I'm no longer the whimpering child you knew. I am Kilgore, the bandit king, the leader of the Ronin. What a clown. Josiah, tell your friend to turn yourself in before I end his life. He's just wasting our time. Wait, wait. I can reason with him, please. There's no reasoning with an animal like me, Josie. These days, I only know one thing, and that's the taste of combat. Show me who you are now. We'll settle this like men. He has decided, Josiah. He seeks death. He's just one of many who stand in my way, and my pure blade will extinguish his life. Uh, I guess we're fighting? Okay, I'm ready. Please go easy on me. Yeso readies his weapon and focuses on Kilgore. There are no time for feelings. Do we truly have to fight? Very well. Show me your convictions, Kilgore. Gah ha ha! Bring it, Josiah! 
This is like a pretty serious boss. Alright. So, this is uh, our first official fight. Takes 7 damage. I think we just need to kind of hit him hard and fast. Hope the dice rolls are on uh, forever in our favor. Have Nadine defend since she's our only healer here. Just keep going after him. Hi, ah, managed to evade it. Bummer. Alright, so we just gotta. Oh man, that was rough. This could be bad. Oh. Could be really bad. Alright. On Frederick. There, we healed him. Now we need these guys to really pull off something special. Oh. Uh, he blocked it. Alright. Just try to do something to him. Alright. So Nadine is like carrying us right now. This is insane. Let's try to do some manic hysteria. He took a damage. Not loving this. He's mass. Oh, tw oh man. Ugh. Man, he is strong. All right. So you have any healing? Things left. Healing solve. Okay. Just have to keep trying. Okay, so that got a decent hit on him. I wish he'd, she'd, he'd attack somebody else. Boom. Come on. Keep it coming. He avoided all of her attacks. Not great. Try waiting panic again. Oh man, this is getting tough. I might have just lost Frederick. Keep it low. Oh no! Frederick, I'm sorry! Alright, so I think we can bring him back with. Let's see. This Grand Phoenix Feather brings him back. Alright. Just keep going, Nadine. Oh, well, actually. Use heal everybody as much as you can. Not awesome. Let's try this intervene thing. Have him do this super move again. Come on. Six damage. So I'm not sure how the intervene works. At least he's attacking somebody else. Come on. Release Chakra. Discipline per rank to add Chakra steps. Uh, go that route again. Hope we can get something solid on him. Come on. Right.
Frederick is now protected. I'm trying to get some damage on this guy. Guess we should grind it a little more. Leash. And then you really have Nadine heal again. Keep it up. Oh, that was a good roll. <laughs> 10 damage. Right, we'll have you heal again. This is tough. I'm not sure this is going to do as much as we need it to, but maybe if we can endure another turn, we can have her do it again and get us back to a good level. Six damage. We're getting closer. Survive. It's the only goal at the moment. Oh no. Frederick, what are you doing to me, man? Right. So we'll bring Frederick back again. Deal with his narcissism, his unwarranted narcissism next go around. So, this is a pretty full demo because we're just about at our hour and we're still going pretty strong on this storyline. Come on, bring some heat here. Got to eventually get him right. Oh man, he's getting some very, very nice dice rolls right now. Finally, somebody evaded something. Right. Keep going after this. Get some nice rolls. Boom. Finally. Something good. Alright. Try this again. It's supposed to be like his good move. Try to get some nice rolls. 16 damage. All right, we're getting there. Guardians ward as ward. Uh, keep going with this. Keep trying to just pump up their health. All right, everybody's doing okay so far. All right, just keep trying to hit hit this stuff home. Really, really matters your dice rolls, huh? I feel like I've learned a lot about Dungeons & Dragons just from playing this. So maybe this is a great introduction to Dungeons & Dragons for a lot of people. So if you ever felt like Dungeons & Dragons was kind of unaccessible or you don't really have anyone to like set up a game with, it seems like it'd be a great way to do that. Right. Come on. Give me something good, dude. Well, eight. Eight is definitely something. Oh, doesn't have the power. Right, he has no no willpower anymore. But that's a 20, so that should be pretty solid. Nine damage, perfect. Just gotta keep grinding on him. Grinding him down. If I do a move. But my issue is I don't have anyone that's really interested in Dungeons and Dragons in my immediate life. So like, I don't really have a game that I can join. So something like this would ha has appeal to me, because I like that longer form storytelling and character building. And I like that you get to make a lot of your own choices and your choices seem to matter. Where it's like you can talk, try to talk villains out of fighting and kind of negotiate. So this definitely seems like something I'd want to put more interest into and invest more time into. We'll go a little... oh, well, we lost Frederick. We will be a little over our hour, but we will see if we can get through this. 
before we stopped the video. But it could be that we just didn't didn't go hard enough on the grinding to make this happen. But we might be able to pull it off. Feeling kind of good about it. I thought Nadine was going to be kind of a wash character, but she's turned out to be super effective. So that surprise has been fun. Got some nice 20 rolls. And we're getting steadily closer. In the comments, uh, let me know what, what you think of this one. I'm curious if you're a Dungeons & Dragons player, this feel like it copies the experience for you? And does it make you want to play more? That's, that's the thing I want to know about a lot of this stuff. Does anything that you saw make you want to play more? I feel like I'd want to read like the basics of Dungeons & Dragons before continuing with this, just so I can get a little more out of it. As far, far as like these like stat growths and things. But... Right... Right? He's got to be pretty fearful because I've like done so many fear attacks on this poor dude. Right, I think we're going to be able to pull this off. We lost Nadine. We're going to lose everybody but you, so. Right, that should do it. Taking 9 damage. Of you so hopefully wrap this thing up. I think that did it. See what happens and then we'll wrap this up. Bandit King has fallen. So nice stat growth. Nothing for Frederick and Nadine because they wouldn't die on us. Yeah, it's funny. You were always the strongest of us, Josie. Oh, the good old days. You, me, Aster, and Yisso. What happened to us? The outskirts were not kind to us, my friend. They took Aster from us, then Yisso here. We're not even sure what happened to him. Yisso walks forward between his allies to look at Kilgore. Kilgore looks at him and laughs at himself. And understands. Yisso, I thought I felt something odd about you. Guahaha. I've just decided I will follow you two to the ends of Lyran until I'm victorious. How annoying. We should just kill him and move on. I don't want to kill anyone, Frederick. Please, let's just let him go. Ugh, you act as if it's a choice. I will see you all again. So long, suckers. Just what we needed. Someone following us. Our mission will require a certain level of covertness. We can't have loud bandits chasing us down for fun. I understand, Frederick, but... I can't simply kill someone, especially someone I've known forever. Yeah, sorry. I'm happy to help you on your mission, but I'm not a killer. Just my luck that I ended up with a couple of pacifists and some creepy guy that can't speak. Let's go already. All right, and on that note, we are going to wrap up the first episode of Indie One Hour Indie. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, let me know in the comments what you think of this game. I'm super impressed with it and definitely want to play some more when it fully releases. I will include uh, all the information so you guys can find out where, where you can play the demo in the description below. And thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you're going to enjoy this new series. Bye now.